Good evening, good afternoon. Well, it's getting dark, so I guess it's on the border. Um, welcome to my broadcast. This is Facebook Live first. We'll be on YouTube later, I'll tell you about that shortly. Um, this is episode number 525. The topic today is truth to power. Even in relationship? Or even in relationship, depending on you want to say that. I'll guess that in a second before I want to choose myself and I'll say a couple of um, words about other things. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And for the last couple of years almost now, I've done these daily broadcasts called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. So this is episode number 525. And before I jump into the topic, which is truth to power, um, even in a relationship, um, first I want to send my, light, my, my love and prayers to my friends in the Agoura Hills West Valley area where the fire seems to be getting bigger and bigger. I'm um, asking all of them, please take care of yourselves and stay safe. And also after the shooting that was in Thousand Oaks, a lot of local stuff um, yesterday and today, for those affected by it, I, I send my prayers to I, I have friends who are connected to that. So just putting that out first. All right. To the topic in hand, um, I, the phrase to, truth to power has been sitting in my mind recently because of some thoughts that have been coming up, partly because of the election on Tuesday with the lack of truth that's been expressed in some, some quarters, but also um, the outing of things where things are coming clear because what I'm aware of also since then has been a shift in tracking and other things going on. And there's also been a shift in um, exposing falsehoods, which is good. So of course, being in the area of relationship and romance, I thought, how can I apply that to this? So here goes. <laughs> um, one of my priorities in my work is to be as authentic and transparent as I can be. And having just spent four and a half days in a authentic leadership program and retreat, which ended on Tuesday, which is why the broadcasts were late those days, I've really got a new. I've, I've got. I've gained a new appreciation, and understanding for being authentic and being transparent and being true. And so there's this question about how does that apply to a relationship, or how would I use that in a relationship? Because for me, even more now since the past weekend, and for a long time, I've held that for my preference in relationships, both romantic and social, actually and business, being honest and being truthful is a top priority. In fact, it is a definite, up to up my yesterday's talk about um, deal breakers and stuff like that around keeping your word. This is another one of those things where for me, it is definitely a, I just call it a green flag. It's, not, it's the opposite red flag. Basically, it's a must have, a requirement for a relationship for me. Um, when, people make, makes, when people lie to me, especially in, intimately in, romantic, in relationship, that's a massive deal breaker for me. And so I want to speak to this from a point of view of one, to make sure that's a point that you understand and value for yourself, because maybe you don't care about people being honest to you, I don't know. But I also want to add to it about how that creates more power, because it is truth to power in the sense of it can challenge people who are more powerful than you think they, than you think you are, because that's a small perception. But it's also about how truth gives you more power. Yes, I'm going to play it that way around, just to keep it interesting. Being honest and truthful in a relationship now, I just had to jump in on something that just kept me from the past. There are ways of being truthful that are compassionate and caring and blunt and direct. They're not always the same, just to be clear. So I'm speaking about truth and being honest in relationships. There are framings or um, caveats on the way you can express that and be that and do that. Sometimes being honest in a relationship, if you want to be blunt about it or be direct, can be very upsetting and very distressing. So I'm not saying necessarily it's the right way, but it's bringing the truth to the conversation, which can be framed in a way of offering it in a more gentle and maybe more inclusive way, can actually be received. And there's a difference. So what I'm feeling is how can we take the relationship conversations we have with each other, romantically and socially, and in business and all other areas too, to the next level? How can we be honest in our relationship with our families, parents, children, siblings? How can we be more honest in our business, even with our bosses or our employees? How do we create that place where honesty and truth is a welcomed state of conversation? I'm not sure I'm going to have answers to all these questions, by the way. I'm just putting these out because they're coming through me. 
So if you have answers and ideas, please put them in the comments below because I may not get to that. I'm not sure yet. I, I'm just expressing and voicing what I feel needs to be said, perhaps. Um, it would sure beat the hell out of what we've got so far if we brought honesty and truth to our political conversations. Um, there are many, many places where that is sadly missing. And it's... Um, Okay, enough of that. That, that. I don't want to go there right now. I know right now because this week was when the, the midterms happened. There's a lot of political conversation going around, and I'm certainly part of it and watching it. But I want to stick to the relationship conversation for romantic conversation because that's where I spend most of my work and my field. Um, so, truth into power. Let's do it that way. For many people, not you, probably, but somebody else. I always have to do that when I talk about this, but. What can I say? For many people, men and women, make, presenting, oh, here we go, presenting a false appearance to somebody is a safer way of being in a relationship than actually being blunt, truthful, and honest. It's almost like there's a fear that they won't be in love for who they are. There's another piece. Okay, I'm watching this thing fall together, so bear with me as I combine these pieces. So to be in a relationship, people are feeling they've got to put on a brave face, a false mask, an appearance of who they're not, so they'll get the person they want to be with, whether it's a woman or a man. I understand how that works and why people do that, but the truth is when you do that, you're setting up a massive house of cards, figuratively speaking, because what you're creating is a structure that is extremely um, unstable. Because if you're telling your future mate these um, sorry, um, it's getting dark so I can't, I can't even read the screen what am I saying here Anthony good to see you sir I'm attempting to do this talk without glasses but of course lately because I'm not lighting the room and since it's now an hour later than it really is if you know what I mean um, no it's an hour later than it should be yeah whatever so my, my eyes seem to need my glasses when it gets darker so hence I'm having to read the screen away so nice to see you Anthony um, getting back on the topic attempting to When you are somebody who cannot, sorry, who has to portray an image of who you're not to attract your partner, you're telling yourself and that person lies. You're making stuff up that isn't true because you're afraid that being truthful would limit your ability to be in relationship with perhaps that person. I'd like to tell you something, it won't work. <laughs> I mean, you can maintain the falsehood for a while, but as time goes by, either the truth will leak out or the falsehood would become so unbearable you won't be able to sustain it. And forget about intimacy, sensuality, and connection. Without, those, without that honesty and connection, it's basically impossible. You can fake it, but faking it isn't real. If you're not real, you can't be truly intimate. I think that makes sense. That's a clear line for me. Maybe it isn't for you, but for me it's a straight line. So, when you are being will, when you, sorry, when you are willing and being honest and selling your truth, from the get-go, from the first date, be real up front and tell the truth. I don't mean tell them everything about your life, but at least be honest about everything in the conversation. When you do that, if they don't want to go out with you, it may not be your ideal situation, but there's no bullshit going on, there's no hiding, there's no falsehood going on. You get to be free and expressing and real. And frankly, if you're looking to do that, you're going to actually attract a much better quality of relationship. Even if the one you thought you were after doesn't fit, because the one you're after probably wouldn't work anyway. So why not hold true to your values, live in your truth, and attract somebody who meets you there? And for most people, that's a very weird experience. They don't have the understanding of that. But I'm saying it that you can do that. The reality is, the more honest and truthful you are, the easier it gets because there's no um, shielding and bullshit around you. You're being honest and transparent. And that, for me, is one of the best ways you can approach relationships because it automatically evokes intimacy and connection because you're not hiding anything between you two. The problem with being fake is that you've got this wall that you put up around you. And ain't nothing to get through it until you actually tell your truth. So for me, truth is power in relationships. I didn't know that going in on the title, but it's what I'm realizing more now, is that having that ability to be honest and transparent through compassion and caring as well is absolutely a simple but effective way of improving the quality of your relationships, all of them, not just romantic. So my invitation to you, my um, encouragement to you, 
is to really look at your life in all areas of relationship, be it a romantic relationship, business relationship, social, family, any of those relationship areas. And notice where you've been unwilling to speak the truth. We've been holding back. And I think all of us carry that to a degree. I know for myself, I have areas in my life where I can be more honest with certain people around me, which I'm going to do something about. So I'm saying my encouragement to you, in fact, your homework, let's do that. I'll give you homework. Your homework, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> like Mission Impossible, is to raise the quality of communication in all your relationships. Okay, let me say it another way. Start with one. <laughs> raise the quality of one relationship in your life, particularly one that's close to you, by putting more honesty and truth into the conversation, into the connection, and let that take you where it goes. Now, as I said before, some relationships may end because of that honesty, because they can't handle it. To be honest, I think you'd be better off without them. So the more honesty and truth you can bring to your communication with everybody around you, including family, yes, even family, and your primary relationship especially, and your dates if you go single and going on dates, the more likelihood is you're going to be able to maintain that easily because there's no stress to actually tell the truth. It's a lot more stress to create lies, by the way. But also you'll base your relationship on trust and honesty, which is an extremely clean and powerful and real place to start. So truth to power relationship is a simple key that will open the door to amazing intimacy, connection, power, yes, and reality in your relationships. The thing is, you've got to be honest yourself. And you've got to be honest with yourself. Ooh, there's a twist. So if you've been telling yourself a lot of um, lies, falsehoods, things that aren't true, maybe it's time to own up to the truth with yourself first. Start there and see what happens. If you've been lying to yourself about how you're not as good as you think you are, if you've been lying to yourself because you think you're not as fit as you think you are, if you're lying to yourself because you think you're not as attractive as you really are, it's time to stop lying to yourself. Yeah, I'm thinking that way intentionally. Most of us have a bad habit of telling ourselves lies that we're not as good as we think we are. And the truth is, we're better than that. We're better looking, we're better being, we're better feeling, we're better connecting, we're better loving, we're better everything than we tell ourselves. So start by being truth to yourself because the truth you give yourself is extremely powerful because you start to become more whole, more vital, more real in the world. And that will change every relationship you have. Mm, this is getting more fun. <laughs> so your homework is truth telling to yourself in the mirror if need be, in your journaling, in your connection with other people, be it by email, by phone, by talking to them directly. Start raising the standards of your connection by raising the quality of your, of your truth and that will increase the level of your power. Same movement. So I hope that helps you. So with that, I think I'll let, I'll let it sit. Um, if, you're single and having if you're single and having challenges around relationships, I invite you to reach out to me. I do offer a coaching gift, a consultation at the beginning of working with me so you can discover if you want to work together. I'll leave the link in the comments for that. I will once again remind you that the self-love self guided uh, meditation that I have works wonders and if you want to check that out I'll put the link in the comments for that as well um, because self-love will lead to self-honesty so that's actually a tool that will be useful for what you're doing and with that I think I'll leave it all oh, reminders this is again my Facebook live that goes onto YouTube so we can find the replays is on Facebook they go into my business page which is Barry Author. I also created a channel on my on my sorry playlist on my YouTube YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, is the channel, which is my name on every social media platform. You can subscribe to my um, YouTube channel there and go to the playlist, which is Messages from the Masculine. All 524 plus this one will be there. Um, and I'm building up my YouTube sorry, I'm building up my podcast library on iTunes. You can go to Messages from the Masculine there, subscribe to that as well, and you can download the audios of my first several broadcasts. I've got to do much more of those. I've just got so much on my plate I'm going to have to do that so you're welcome you're welcome Anthony you give me lots to think about and meditate on <laughs> well hopefully it'll give you some inspired action too so thank you for listening Anthony I appreciate you being here and, and thanks for always sharing my broadcast I appreciate that as well so with that I wish you all well who are watching the now watching the replay if you don't have any questions by the way please put them in the comments I will respond when I sign off um, I'll put the links in the comments I mentioned those two and I will invite you to raise the standard of your communications in your, with yourself and other people because both deserve it. Yes, truth and honesty are actually powerful places to be honest, to be connected, and because we all deserve more truth. With that, I wish you, to say, wish you well. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow. 
uh, same time same bat channel and uh, let's get real out there shall we I'll see you later